Hello, welcome back to Blake's Den. Uh, I thought in this video I'd show you the uh, ignition system on my tractor. So my tractor runs an A-series engine, 1098 cc. The tractor itself is nothing like a tractor you've ever seen before. It's a, called a Turner Ranger. Click on the uh, video above to find out more about it. Uh, it looks a bit of a funny shape at the moment because I've got the engine bay open. Um, basically, I've had some issues with it not running right ever since I rebuilt the carburetor. So when I did the carb rebuild, um, it was running quite rough and uh, it was basically all down to the points. So the points are down here, sort of inside the distributor. Um, I had the same issue happen the other day where it was sort of running rough. Uh, so I decided to change the points and yeah, just hadn't really not much luck with them really. So, I mean, well service points should not really cause any problems at all. Um, but I want to just eliminate that that issue really. You know, is that really what's causing the rough running or not? So to eliminate that, I've decided to buy myself an electronic ignition system. I bought the cheapest one available, which was on Amazon for about £17. And this is all I got. So you've got a little, uh, little pick up there, a little sensor there, new rotor arm, ring, I think they're going in some wires, and no instructions. So I thought we could uh, work together and try to see how this all works. So I think the first thing to do is to um, get the existing points removed. So that big screw there, and there should be another screw down there, uh, which holds in the. Um, capacitor. Uh, I've already taken that out and subsequently lost it. So I need to take that screw out and then remove the points and then we'll see how this electronic system fits. So actually before I take this apart I've just been taking a photograph of it just so I can see where the various parts go. Uh, but I thought it'd be interesting to show you actually how it works. So if I just take the rotor cap off you can see you've got like sort of a square shaft here. So if imagine, instead of being square, imagine it being round, but with lobes um, in each corner, or four lobes on it for four cylinders. So as, as the engine rotates, it drives this centre shaft, which turns round, and the red uh, sort of follower open and closes the points, which are those. So when there's contact, um, it, you basically get a spark. It, triggers the uh, the coil and when it's open you don't and then the rotor arm sends that to the that rotor arm goes that way around so that spins round that picks up the um, inside of the uh, distributor cap so the center is the feed and then it feeds out to the um, four corners which go to the four HT leads so it's a fairly uh, fairly simple system um, the ele electronic ignition, all it does is replaces the um, the mechanical part of the the breaker there and does it through electronics and sensors instead. So should make it a lot more reliable. So I think I've worked this out. You've got a recess in the back there. That recess sits over that spigot there. And then you can utilise the screw hole which was holding the points in to hold the electronic ignition in. Um, before I put that on the back, mount that though, um, came with this pack of thermal compound, which I think is like heat sink material. I believe you put all that over the back just to uh, help transfer the heat away um, after it's been running for a while. So. Right, let's get that assembled and we'll think about how it's wired up. So I think I've found one of the problems why the ignition timing kept going out. That is the screw which was holding in the, uh, the point and it's just completely stripped its thread. So I think that was causing the, the points to move, which was changing the opening. So, um, I'm hoping to uh, wang in a soft tap and screw instead. Not the best solution, but it's a solution, so we'll see how that works out. 
Well, that's held in there fairly secure, actually, because you've got that spigot on it anyway. It stops it from moving around. I mean, the whole backing plate moves a bit, but it seems, uh, seems all right. So, good. And uh, I've got, like, a, just a, not a generous air gap, but um, just enough gap, really, so that when the rotor arm spins around, it's not fouling the, uh, the point. So, in fact, we can test that now. Uh, if I spin the engine over, yeah, I had to reach around to knock it into neutral there, but if I spin it over, there we are, doesn't seem to be fouling, so, right, let's look at the wiring next. So, I was just sense checking this, and I've actually gone back to the original rotor arm. I just wasn't happy with the quality on the, uh, the rotor arm, which came with the set, but um, it should still work, no matter what we use. So coming out of the um, the module, there's a red wire and a black wire. So we'll just disconnect that. From, well, just move that out of the way. So you can see, red and the black. The red, I think, it goes to the positive. Needs a positive feed. To do that, I've just tapped that off the positive side of the coil. And then the black wire is like the um, like the trigger wire, and that needs to go to the opposite side of the coil. It just happens to be the case that my trigger wire was also red. So that wire there goes to that side of the coil. So <clears throat> if we put the distributor cap back on, that let me get the wires in the right place first. So if we put the cap back on, bear with me while I do this. Two little clips there. Very hard to do with uh, only one hand. There we are. Um, I've got a spark plug out there. So if I turn the ignition on now and go to start, we should get a good spark. There we are. Really good spark there. So think that's wired up correctly so I've just got to tidy up this wiring um, this this wire is a little bit long and the black wire I need to put some um, heat shrink over that so let me do that now it's all tidied up and back together now quite happy with it spark plugs back in so well, let's see if this runs now uh, noise alert it's quite noisy this and I've also got to operate the choke manually because that's just how it is. So, um, yeah, let's see if it runs. I haven't set the timing yet, but I haven't really changed the timing much. But let's just see if it runs. So I'm hoping you can hear me over it, but it's obviously running. It still sounds a little rough, but it always has sounded rough this because it's only got like half an exhaust on it. But if I give it a quick rev. Must be a little bit of tweaking to the timing still required. I've just been using as a little uh, adjustment the, um, vernier on the points. Um, the distributor so I've just been trying to get that back to normal but it's running now and it should be maintenance free once our timing is set so I've come back to this in the daylight give it a good run it's fairly warm now the engine well it was getting there it's quite a cold day today but um, yeah I've done a few tweaks on the, uh, the vernier down here get the timing about right and I've also uh, tweaked the mixture a bit so I think she was running a bit too uh, rich 
So now, let's see, it seems to be idling okay. Still a little bit poppy on the exhaust, but as I say, it's only got half an exhaust on. So if I just turn that off for a second, you can see the exhaust just comes out there and it's literally just one can, so. I think that's uh, half the issue, but let's just see if she uh, restarts. Yep, so I think we'll call that a win. I still need to check the, the timing with a timing gun, but uh, I think we'll leave it as air for now. So uh, hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.